way. So today we're making a blanket ladder. Uh, it's going to be fairly basic and it's just to help a student try to improve the design that she's already started. So she wants it to be 72 inches long. So we're going to go with that. We're going to go six feet over 72 inches. And I seem to be having some issues with this. So maybe it's because of my recording software. There we go. All okay. right. So six feet, comma, 2.5, because she wants it to be 2.5 inches um, wide. So she's going to start with two by fours. And then um, from there, she's going to cut it down on the table saw and then cut everything with the miter saw. So control shift E is our shortcut for zoom extents. I'm also then going to zoom out. And I apologize, I'm using a trackpad, not a external mouse, which I find is a lot easier in SketchUp. All right, so looking straight down over top of the side rail, we are going to use our protractor tool now. And a good angle that I found for this when I built my own blanket ladder was um, a 10 degree angle. So I'm gonna use my protractor to mark out that 10 degree angle. Oh, and I accidentally got the rotate protractor. It looks very similar, but it's under the, the tape measure tools. Okay, so there we go. And we're going to set it to be 10 degrees. Hit enter. Next, we're going to get our line tool. So L for line. And we're going to draw a line across. Now, if you are having problems getting it to snap, you can zoom in on a certain area and it's going to be much, much easier. Okay, so and then once we have that, we're going to get our eraser and we're going to erase that little tip that's sticking out. Perfect. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, get our protractor tape measure actually first, so a T for tape measure, and I think we want this top part so where it meets the wall. We're going to go four inches down. That seemed like a good measurement. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our protractor back again. And from this point, we're going to rotate over another 10 degrees. And that's going to give us a want it to be the same as whatever angle we we put at the other end of it. Oh, and I see I made a mistake uh, just visualizing. So we're going to get our protractor back in. I clicked from the wrong side, so this is the edge that's going to meet the wall. We're then going to click and we're going to go 10 degrees. Perfect. Now we get our line tool and there we go. Press E for eraser. Erase that part that sticks up off the end. So we've basically already laid out our side rail with the exception of where in those pieces within that, where the, uh, the, the rungs will meet on there. Okay, next, we're going to make this a component so we can either draw a box around it or we could double click it since it's a 2D drawing so far. And um, we're just gonna type G, which is our Rail and perfect. So we're gonna glue to any and then say okay. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna edit that component. And we could have done this before, I guess, but get our push pull tool and we're gonna pull this up 1.5 inches, which is the thickness of a two by four. And um, now that we are working in a 3D environment. I'm going to now rotate this up. We could have started with this drawn vertically. It's just another another way of doing it. Okay, so there we go. So we're gonna get our rotate tool. Remember this is a little different than the other one. And I'm going to orbit it around so I can see this a little better. And we're going to zoom in. Remember, wherever you have your cursor pointed, that's where it's going to click to. Um, so, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate that vertically. So, to rotate that vertically, I want it to be on the green axis. And we're going to rotate that up 90 degrees. And if we really wanted to get technical, we could rotate it around so it's standing um, on that 10 degree angle, but I think it's going to be a little easier for us to draw everything out if we keep it on uh, in a plumb manner. All right, 
up next. Next thing we're going to do is from this point, um, we're going to get our tape measure tool, and this just kind of bugs me having it up in midair. So I'm just going to draw it straight over uh, 2.5, enter, and then I'm going to get my move tool, and I'm going to move it into that position so that we're working off the horizontal plane a little easier. Just a pet peeve, doesn't have to be done this way. There we go. Okay, now the next thing that we're gonna do is um, she would like these to be spaced out evenly and she wants four rungs. So I'm gonna get my rectangle tool and now that this is a component, we can draw straight on it. And we want these rungs to be an inch and a half I believe is what she said. So inch and a half, actually let's go two inches, two inches wide by, um, she wants the whole thing to be 21 inches wide in the end. So we have an inch and a half for a rail on one side, inch and a half on the other side, it's three inches. So 21 take away three, we're gonna end up having our rungs to be 18 inches long. So we're gonna type in 18 comma two, enter. And we're going to get our push pull. We're going to pull this up 1.5 for a 2x4 thickness. And then we're going to triple click it <clears throat> to select it all. And we're going to create the component. We're going to call that our um, rungs. And I think that's spelled right. It might have a silent W. I cannot remember. So we're just going to go with that. It really doesn't matter what you call these. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to control shift E to zoom extents and this can be a little hard to see depending on the size of your monitor but we want to copy this now all the way up to the top so we're going to get our move tool hit control and we're going to copy it all the way up to the top now don't get confused because we have so many there but we're going to do what's called an array so as soon as you copy we're going to divide the space. If we want four rungs, we're going to divide the space into five equal spaces. So divide five, enter. You see that our posts, our rungs are placed automatically. And then the next thing that we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to go back and we're going to erase that bottom rung because we don't want it and the top rung. So you can hold control while using your select tool and then just hit backspace or delete key. There we go. Next thing uh, on the agenda here is I'm going to orbit around and I'm just going to copy, I guess uh, we wanted these to be, there's different ways you can do this, but I'm going to move, copy this over on the right axis. Oh, it's not going on the right axis. Okay. So we're just going to copy that rung over good intersecting point. So let's go from this point over on the red axis and from that point over to there be 19.5, enter, and there's our blanket ladder already done. So go orbit around, make sure everything looks good. Awesome. And I hope you enjoyed that. I guess the next step that we need to do in order to build this and what I ask my students to do is to go in ahead and dimension everything. So using my dimension tool, I'm going to want to have the length of the rails. And these guide point guidelines are starting to get a bit annoying to me. So I'm just going to go over to my glasses and uncheck my axes and also uncheck my guides. Okay, and move that away. We're going to then uh, dimension some more. So we're going to show that this is inch and a half thick. A little hard to see, so just right click, change our text position to either outside start or outside end, depending what looks better, what fits the, the space better. Um, we want to know what the spacing between our rails is. So it's nice that it ended up being a nice even number. Um, sometimes you get 64ths or, or measurements like that and 
gets to be a little tricky for measurement if you have uh, students working on that. Now I see that our top and bottom ones are a little bit different, but that's okay. Um, but the general spacing between should work just fine. Yeah, so there we go. Okay, and we shouldn't have to space dimension all of them out. It gets to be a little cluttered, so I'm just going to backspace that middle one. You can see the pattern forming. Um, now, the one thing that we will want to know is this measurement along the 10 degree angles. So, <clears throat> just to make it a little bit easier, um, what I would recommend is getting your zoom tool, right click, we're going to zoom window. There probably is a shortcut for zoom window, but I don't remember that one offhand. It's something I need to learn. Get our dimension tool out, and the distance from there to there is 1 and 3 sixteenths. So just finding um, those intersections, and then we have 4 inches as well. We could, you see that it will snap and show us a, a measurement on the angle here, the distance, that's not so important. We just need to find at the edge, where's that point? At the edge, where's this point? And then draw a line between. So that will work for there. Uh, I'm going to pan down to the bottom. So when you go to print this, you may want to print multiple angles. Um, but that is what we need to know. So then the next thing that we want to do is we want to show what is the distance from that point to that point, which is we're going to change our text position to outside of start. So it's just simply not seven and seven sixteenths of an inch up that you'd measure to that next point. Okay, I hope this helps. Um, Am I missing anything? Yes, I'm missing a couple of dimensions. So just that space between. And then um, the other thing is, so control shift E is just the height. No, we've got that. One of my pet peeves with this online version is everything's given in feet and inches rather than the option of a default of inches, which typically students will find a lot easier. So for example, what's one foot two and one eighth? Now they've got to do the math of 12 plus two is 14 and an eighth inches. We, from here, we go ahead and create a parts list, figure out the exact cost of that material, and um, go ahead and, and build it. I hope you enjoyed that and look forward to helping you with more projects in the future.